everybody, Josh RV Nerd. Welcome to Bish's RV here with a brand new floor plan from Jayco. This is a new member of their Eagle HT series, the 29DDB, B, DD, DDB, BBD. B <laughs> Bibbity, bobbity, boo. Doesn't matter what it is. It's, I'm pretty sure it's the DDB. This is not a replacement for the very popular 29.5 BHDS. That graduated up into the full Big Bird Eagle series. This is the new kind of smaller, lighter Eagle HT, little brother basically, but it hits a lot of the same notes. It just does it a little bit less weight and cost. So it still has double over double bunks that are each 600 pound rated with cargo space and a little camp kitchen below. Um, the, the bunks are orientated a little bit differently on this one. Uh, still has a little bit of storage in there, privacy wall. And that's what's cool about this one. It looks and feels nice and big and open during the day, but when you, you close the door to the bunk room, like you still have private rear bedroom, you have private front bedroom with a true queen bed and a weird short bed or anything like that. And since this one does not have a closet slide in the bedroom, that means that you could, if you felt like it, expand up from a, a common true queen to uh, what's known as an Olympic queen, which is 66 inches wide uh, instead of 60. They still have the hot cold weather package. They still have the automatic leveling system. These are still solar prepped like they were last year. When you move up into Big Brother Full Eagle, that's when you're going to start to see things like a standard solar package. There's a couple key little differences, but at the end of the day, they're all eagles. And you see that like with the whisper ducted air system to keep everything more quiet. And I don't know about you, but it's like when there's a lot of noise and everybody starts talking, like I get, I get irritated real quick. I get kind of sonically triggered. So having that quieter AC system is something I really like. But I've seen this floor plan before from several different manufacturers. And one thing I can tell you without even having closed the slide yet, you're gonna lose the bunks in road mode. But giving you information like that, helping you decide if this is the right one or not for you, that's what I wanna do today. And if you appreciate that, make sure you like our video and hit that subscribe button if you're new with us and welcome to the RV Nerd Herd, basically. By the way, just uh, asking you for a little bit of a bucket of patience with me today. I woke up and I don't know why I am suffering from a very mild a uh, bit of vertigo today. Nothing that's really gonna stop me from operating. But like if my camera work gets weird, I swear I'm not any drunk or normal. And when I'm in a model like this that I've seen, um, well, not this specific model, obviously, because it's new, but a floor plan like this that I've seen before, I like to try to go about it a little bit differently every time. Just maybe it helps you pick up different things. So we're actually standing in the rear bunk area looking around right now. And uh, again, it's definitely worth mentioning that this is not a unique floor plan in the RV industry. I think Reflection was pretty much the first one to really do something like this and popularize it. But again, at this point, there is no shortage of builders making a floor plan like this. And they all bring something a little bit different to the table. Like we already talked about that whisper ducted air system, but uh, you may also be interested to know that those are uh, like the, that's a smart TV. It's an insignia, you know, app enabled smart TV up there. And it is all pocket screwed lumber core cabinetry. It's not all held together with staples in your imagination, which, you know, that sounds super critical. The fact is, there's really nothing wrong with stapled fasteners. I'm a person who's been doing this for the better part of 15 years now. And um, I, I've seen thousands and thousands of used RVs. You would think if a cabinet was going to fall apart, you would find that happening in a used RV, but I've yet to really see it happen just due to the staples failing. I've seen things fail for a hundred different reasons, but not, not really because of that, not on a cabinet. So I think it's more of a theoretical concern than a practical one. Now, a couple interesting notes, some things that they're moving to here. Um, Jayco's have had carpetless slides for a while, and they were one of the very first where the carpet uh, or the, the slide floor and the main floor matched. And it gives the whole RV, I think, a bigger, more open, spacious feel. But did you notice a lack of something? This RV has no floor heat ducts uh, anywhere that they can um, get away with it. So Jayco goes through every time they build a new model. And they will actually cold chamber it and test it. And it kind of seems to be that they are beginning to test their RVs with the... Uh, you know, um, cabinet ducted heat system as compared to a floor ducted heat system. And if they can maintain 
their zero to 100 degree functionality in these fifth wheels. They're sticking uh, with the cabinet ducted heating just so that it's, you know, less worry about, you know, skittles and paper clips and every other thing falling down into the floor vents. Like you can see uh, one of those uh, white vents over there. But you may also notice how they've kind of cleaned up their decor. Last year they had two decors, now they have one. But what they did here is it's just a simple, clean line to accent inside the cabinets. It's not that um, distress fade that it had before, which some folks felt it looked dirty even when it was brand new. And that's obviously not something you want in your RV. And as you can see, holy crap, Batman, you've got a ton of countertop space in this thing. Although I've noticed some manufacturers are moving away from the glass top on the stove. That being said, I've actually had some customers tell me I wish they'd get away from the glass tops on the stove because all it does is rattle when it goes down the road and I have to like shove towels under it to keep it from breaking. So I'm kind of curious, what is your take and your input on this? Do you prefer the glass top? Do you actually use this prep space? Or do you just like having the burners available as they are right now? Um, especially on a floor plan like this, considering you really have a chunk of counter space. Now this one, they did not opt for a uh, electric space heating fireplace. They obviously went with absolutely maximized storage. And I'm gonna swing through later and get that all opened up. But as long as I'm sitting down here, I want you to get to see under the overhead cabinets because that's where you're gonna see some household, some USBs. Over there, you're gonna see just household outlets. Um, the, uh, the trick with this floor plan is your sidewalls are inch and a half laminated, which isn't really thick enough for a power outlet. Um, and because you have a, uh, a, a pocket door that slides inside that wall, it, it might actually be deep enough that it fights with actually having wiring in the wall. So something to kind of keep in mind and consider there. Sealed edge thermal foil countertops all the way through. And another thing that they went to here in the 24 season is they standardized in the Eagle family um, just GE appliances across the board. Like, you know, the oven, the microwave, the, uh, the refrigerator, that 12 volt compressor fridge over there. Everything on this is just flat GE across the board. And I think the idea there is to give more consistency and it provides more accountability to the, um, the, the suppliers, you know? They can't get away with uh, kinda, I don't know, trying to sneak through some stuff that isn't really fantastic. Now, as this thing is telling us, which is called the Dangler, the double bunks that we're looking at each are 600 pound rated. Um, <laughs> now, something to kind of keep in mind, when you're bouncing down the road, you lose about a third of that. Uh, you know, the, the 600 pound rating is when the RV is at rest. If you want to use these as a cargo space in transit, they're going to be 400 pound rated each, which still is nothing to sneeze at, but just something to kind of keep in mind. Now, I do like that we have a lights out kids kind of switch up here, but each bunk still maintains its own uh, individual light and power outlets. Plus up top here, you've got a little TV hookup. And something I've seen people do in floor plans like this, I've actually seen them remove the top bunk, which doesn't, it's not structural. It's not like your walls are gonna cave in if you do that. And then basically use it in a sense like a smaller two bedroom fifth wheel. I've seen some folks uh, like with um, adult children, uh, like special needs children do that. So that's just maybe kind of a thing to think about right there. Um, taking a look at all these storage here. Let's uh, start right up top here in the bunk room. Anytime you get storage in the bunk room, it is handy dandy for sure because kids eat up a lot of space. I actually think I forgot to open the extra drawers um, under that whole step platform right there. So there's even more storage than even I'm flashing around on camera here. I think you can see what I'm talking about. Now moving through the kitchen, the only real critique I have with the storage in the kitchen is just that the overhead cabinet above the microwave no longer has any sort of gas strut. It's what I'm gonna call the gravity close, which basically means it's gonna fall down and, and, and bonk you on the head if you're not paying attention. <laughs> but other than that, the kitchen has massive storage, but again, no fireplace. So I'm kind of curious, you know, which one kind of makes most sense for you? Do you prefer the, uh, the fireplace or do you prefer the maximized storage? My experience has been about a 60-40 split where more folks prefer the storage. So I'm kind of wondering if Jayco's leaning toward the, I, I don't know, I guess the correct side of the split here. I'm not sure. The kitchen countertop, you may have noticed, it was angle wedged back a little bit, but it's still so deep. Not fully squared off, but deep enough that I think you're going to enjoy plenty of, uh, plenty of prep space there. Couldn't decide if I want to say plentiful or plenty. And what came out was terp. Nailed it. First try. Um, the table looks crazy, but those radius corners uh, are actually really, really handy. Now, a lot of people, and, I, and I'm guilty of this, I'll admit, 
when we display the tables, we'll display it round side forward because round looks prettier and it looks more inviting, but you actually want the rounded corners uh, so that you can more easily kind of butt scoot boogie wiggle around that dinette. Now I will say, I'm not the world's biggest fan of those knee knocker posts as an adult sized person. Um, it would, I'd definitely be, you know, banging my shins getting around that thing, but you know, I could do it on a rainy day or whatever, sitting inside playing Monopoly, eating food with the family. I could make that work. Um, not quite as many USB plugs here in an HT series as a full blood Eagle, but I don't know enough. The door is prepped for a window shade, just no uh, window shade factory installed on these. And the HT series here, it's just simple. It's straightforward. They have buttons and switches. They don't have uh, the whole Bluetooth kind of system, which is a little confusing for some folks because even down into a J-Feather Micro, you have some form of the in-command system. And sometimes that just kind of trips people up a little bit. Now, they've listened to your feedback and they went more consistent with the decor all the way through the RV this year. Last year, depending on what room you were in, there were like three different decors, bedroom, bathroom, living room, and sometimes there was a lot of different movement uh, within those zones. So I think they, I like the consistency here. Um, taking a look at the storage, you see you do have full storage in the medicine cabinet. And that big closet that we're looking at over there, that is actually also shared with the bedroom. Um, so you can kind of double dip on that space right there. Now, last year, the Eagle HTs did have a combo washer dryer prep in that closet. But the problem, if you utilize the washer dryer prep, well, then you really couldn't, uh, you had nowhere to hang close. It destroyed all your, uh, you know, dry storage for your personal effects and whatnot, as Jack Sparrow would say. Not without my effects. And uh, I, I don't do, I don't do any sort of uh, British-ish accents very well. So apologies to my friends across the pond. Like Mr. Adrian Prake, who actually sends us gifts for Toys for Tots every single year. Uh, not too bad considering, you know, uh, <laughs> clear across an entire ocean. Now that is a Max Air variety fan. It's just a little bit different one. It actually has a rainproof cover basically built right onto it. And as you can see, my head barely fits up in there. Now, thankfully that is, uh, the, the, the shower pan is on the same flush level as the main floor because otherwise I don't know that I'd fit in the upper deck of this. So I'm a little bit over six foot for reference. Um, if you are like six and a half foot tall, your head's going to definitely have to be in the skylight. That's something to consider. Up front here, the um, Eagle family uh, fifth wheels that do not have a closet slide like this one with just that big window over there actually have an interesting benefit. Um, you notice how I have that ma uh, mattress not centered up. I'm not trying to like trick you into saying, oh boy, look at all the room to walk around the bed. I mean, yeah, it's there, but I'm cheating it. I'm giving it plus six inches because I didn't center the bed up. Um, it's a true queen by default, 60 by 80. But if you wanted to put a 66 by 80 Olympic queen in here, you could do that. Something I discovered um, only after opening my mouth a few times, it finally occurred to me. The, um, the, the models that have a closet slide, when the closet slide closes, it would pinch the bed too much. So they're going to be true queen only. So this does have a benefit there for a bigger bed. The other ones don't. 50 amp standard, available as second air. And not only that, it's centralized, the second AC, which I think is great. And if you are claustrophobic, you are going to like the bedroom arrangement on this. If I was just going to ask for one little thing, I think a set of USB plugs in that little headboard pocket, I think that'd be awesome. What's your take on that? Kind of curious. Um, as long as I got my butt up in here, let's go ahead and crack everything open and uh, take a look at the various storage areas. Starting up there, um, again, your, your hanging closet space is actually exclusively um, in that big kind of bedroom, bathroom, sort of shared storage space across from the bed right there. So that's something you're going to want to keep in mind, but big dresser space, that big closet in there. I, uh, the, the HT series is designed to be a very plush, a very comfortable weekender style of RV. Not basic, not the least expensive, not the lightest weight, um, but something where maybe you go out for just a weekend or something like that, but you really want something nice. Or maybe you travel light and you want to do some traveling. It still has the good tires and running gear that we're going to talk about outside. That's where this one kind of comes in right here. But as I said when the video began, eh, I, I tell you what, I will bet your paycheck we're about to lose that bunk room when the slide closes. And sometimes I hate being right. Called it. Notice, by the way, I was willing to bet your paycheck. Um... <laughs> <laughs> on this. <laughs> anyway, bedroom, uh, front bedroom, bathroom, accessible, 
kitchen storage readily accessible. Refrigerator, not so much. However, these refrigerators are designed so that if you want it to hinge on the other side, you could. So if you wanted to open it six to nine inches to reach in and grab a little Capri Sun pouch for the kids while you're stopping for lunch or something, that is something you could do. But this is a major point of consideration for some folks. This might be a deal breaker. I bet there's people who are watching this and said, man, you had me right up until then. And that's a bummer for me to hear, certainly. But I hope you appreciate that we still go out of our way to showcase things like this to help you find which RVs maybe aren't the right one for you as well. Now, I rarely have the opportunity to do this, but this one's all plugged in and it's hot outside. I've got the air conditioner cranked up to full bore right now. And if you listen, if I shut up, not a whole lot of noise on this one. This is not one where if uh, the air conditioner kicks on, it's not gonna roar like Katy Perry. You don't gotta crank the TV up to 11. And at the time I'm actually recording this, this model's so new, uh, the, the general weights and measures are not actually even published and, and available to me at this time. But what I'm going to estimate here based on a lot of experience with a lot of similarly sized RVs and knowing Jayco how I do, Jayco builds a lot of things very nicely, but they're not exactly excellent at making things super lightweight. It's just not their strength. Jayco doesn't do really light. They don't do really cheap very well. They tend to do middle and up really, really good. And what that does mean though, is that this one's gonna carry a chunk of hitch weight that is probably going to disqualify half ton towing. If I had to estimate, I would say north south of about 1600 pounds of empty dry hitch weight. By the time you factor in body weight for the family and cargo in the vehicle and the, uh, the, the, uh, the RV, especially this big front pass through, I think you're gonna smoke the payload capacity of most half tons. Hopefully that's useful info to you there. I won't ever claim to be an expert or guarantee anything, you know, when it comes to that kind of advisory, because it really is situational. There are theoretically some half tons that could handle this, but uh, I think most will not. Um, tankless on-demand water heater over there, still running on those Goodyear Endurance radials. And uh, appreciate Jayco kind of pulling this one up. They actually have next to their visitor center, I'm actually down here at Jayco headquarters right now. They have next to their visitor center, basically a whole bunch of these little miniature campsites. And man, it makes for some really sharp footage. I, I really like being out here in nature a little bit, giving you a little bit better idea of what this thing might actually look like for you as compared to, uh, you know, just walking around our lot or something like that with dirt or asphalt on the ground. The grass looks good, don't it? Anyway, um, this HT series here, two plus three year uh, warranty, still with allowances for full-time RVing. Now, I've done some videos uh, talking about that. Full-time RVing and full-time RV living, not the same thing. It is some very tricky terminology. Basically, what it means, you can camp the living crap out of this sucker and they're gonna take care of you. If this is being used as your primary residence, technically speaking, that's not what they're building this for and warrantying it for. That being said, almost no manufacturer actually bothers asking the question. Uh, and it's not like there's an odometer or an hour meter on an RV. It's not something that can be very easily tracked. Ooh, hold on. Let me get right down low here. You can see hanging out below the belly over there. Maybe you can't, maybe I need to get closer. Little sewer hose caddy tube. It's very plainly obvious to me, but I look on the camera and you don't see it. But there you go, you can see that hanging down right there. Um, I do like the low mounted speakers. I'm only seeing one. Maybe the steps are hiding the other one here. Um, the HT series has the Lippert stable step. The full Eagle will have the more ride. Um, evidently the Lippert steps uh, a little bit less expensive. I, pff, I don't, I, I've never, I don't really have a preference of one versus the other at this point. I used to kind of prefer the more ride because I thought it was a little easier to operate, but uh, the Lippert system has, has since enhanced itself to the point that I think they're frankly pretty interchangeable. Um, again, Goodyear tires, 87 mile an hour rated, but please don't tow 87 miles an hour. You still see the Goodyear, uh, or Goodyear, the Moride CRE 3000 suspension. CRE, by the way, compression rubber equalization. Basically shock dampener. It's gonna take a lot of that herky-jerky wiggle jiggle out of the uh, you know towing equation when you go over a set of like railroad bumps or whatever. Now this is kinda cool. They kinda redesigned 
uh, the whole J-Port thing this year because they never, they, they really weren't having a lot of good kitch, uh, sinks in their camp kitchens. So what they do here is uh, on the J-Port, your griddle mount, and the griddle is included, that big flat top of space right there, that will include a griddle. I just, I thought, you know what, people know what a griddle looks like, but sometimes it's kind of nice just to get to see that you actually really do have some decent, almost like countertop space out here, and that's hard to find sometimes, especially in a compact camp kitchen. Now this little sink, it does not like drain into a holding tank, um, obviously. Yeah, this is the new uh, Bluetooth water drain system uh, <laughs> available on April 1st at Home Depot. April 1st being April Fool's Day. Now, if you wanted to, you could hook a little hose up to that, run it into a bucket or something like that. So there are some opportunities there. But you see that you do have a hot, cold outside utility shower over there. We also have magnet holdbacks and uh, a key-like system. So you'll have one key for your entry door, your deadbolt, all your baggage doors. You don't have separate keys for everything on one of these. And that has gotten better in the RV industry overall, but there are still some brands that you're going to get three or four keys and they're going to be all looped together in weird combinations and you're just going to have to go through and figure them out which set goes to what. As far as I know with this RV you get two keys and it's two copies of the same key because that's all you need. You know one's your normal user and one's your backup. Uh, speaking of backup we do have reverse travel lighting built right into those tail lights and the uh, um, HT series down here still including their fifth wheel towing package. Actually to me it makes more sense down here in the smaller fifth wheels, even though people on the bigger fifth wheels often want to see that. Most state, well, not most, I'll say many states have um, doubles towing length restrictions to the tune that a lot of big fifth wheels, you literally couldn't do any doubles towing on them. Now, some states are like full send, brother, we don't care. Um, you know, it just kind of varies. Always check your local statutes. And if I'm not mistaken, the, the laws and the guidelines and everything to which you're bound and restricted is actually based on your state of residency, although you go out of state doubles towing something into a state that doesn't allow it, I would not be surprised if Johnny Law wanted to take a little chit chat with you, which, which reminds me, story time, basically. On the way over today, driving through Sturgis, Michigan, uh, I was coming up to a stoplight and it turned at that awkward time. Uh, thankfully I wasn't speeding or anything, but there was about 40,000 pounds of tractor trailer behind me. And I slowed down a little slower than maybe I could have. I could have definitely stayed behind the stop line uh, for the light, but I gave that guy a little bit of a buffer because I wasn't gonna be hanging out in the middle of traffic. Naturally, local police officer sees this happen and pulls up next to me and goes, dude, you're way over the line, what are you doing? I explained it calmly and he goes, fair, have a good day and rolled off and I'm like, Nice, nice. So thank you, Sturgis Police Officer. I didn't catch your name. I was just like, huh, that went well. So thanks again for tuning in. I'm just noticing some weird, weird angles on, on the hair. It almost looks like I went through here with like a, like a, I went and buzzed it all off in like one flat spot, but I didn't. I don't cut my own hair. I can barely tie my own shoes. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, squirrel moment. Anyway. Thank you again for tuning in. I'll leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability on one of these. This is a new model. At the time this video rolls out, we may not yet have had an opportunity to really get a lot of these published or uh, onto our dealerships for you. But give us time. I'd be surprised if this isn't one that uh, folks made a steady diet out of. And I'd be kind of curious, what do you think about it? So like Reflection, Rockwood, Arctic Wolf, uh, everybody and their brother makes something like this nowadays. Who do you think did it best and why? I'll leave you some links to some of the other ones down there. And a uh, reminder, don't, don't cut your own hair. So anyway, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.